The Hole Wizard is a fast and easy tool to use in SOLIDWORKS to create many different types of holes in your model. It can create simple, tapered, counterboard, countersunk, and tapped holes for both standard and customized sizes. One of the most intuitive aspects of the Hole Wizard is that you specify the size of the hole by the fastener that goes into it. Another reason is as you start to do the working drawings for the model, any holes that are being created with the Hole Wizard will be automatically annotated in SOLIDWORKS, this way saving you some additional time. In this lesson, you'll use the Hole Wizard to create a couple of different types of holes and how to position them on the model. Here we have the model that we're going to add a couple of different type of holes to. You can download this part file in the description of this video and then follow along with the lesson. Be aware this file was created in SOLIDWORKS 2019, so you will need SOLIDWORKS 2019 or newer to be able to open and use this file. A key point of the whole wizard feature is that it creates the majority of the sketch profiles for you. All you need to do is create the sketch profiles for placing the position of the holes. The whole wizard feature can be accessed by either going to the insert menu and then going down to features and whole wizard or in the Features tab of the Command Manager, you can find the Whole Wizard feature there. Click on it to activate the tool. Once activated, you should see some options in the left-hand panel of the Property Manager. There are two tabs here, one for the options that control the type of hole, and the other is the Positions tab, which controls the position or the location of the holes. First, we will define the shape of the hole in the Type tab, and then select where the hole or holes are to be placed on the model using the positions tab. But before continuing, let's go over a few of the options. The first section we have is the favorite section. So here, if you are finding that you're using a common type of holes, whether they be like M10s or M5s, you can add or remove these from your favorites. That way you don't have to create these settings on the fly each time you use the hole wizard. Next, we have the hole type. And in this, we have the counterbore, countersunk, hole, straight tap, tapered tap, legacy hole, counterbore slot, countersink slot, and the straight slot. For this exercise, let's select the counterbore. Make sure the standard is set to ANSI metric, and then the type is going to be set to hex screw. For the hole specification section, set it to M8 and the end condition to through all. Also make sure the fit is set to normal. If you click on the show custom sizing, it will give you some additional areas to put in values to further control the size and shape of the hole. But for this exercise, we don't need it. So just make sure that is unticked. There are also some tolerance position values that you can control as well. Be aware that some of these options will change depending on the type of hole you are working with. Leaving the rest of the settings to the default settings, let's move on to the position tab and actually place our hole. You'll notice in the dialog that it's asking us to select a face so that we can place the location of the holes. If you were to be placing holes on multiple faces, you could use the 3D sketch option, but this will not be covered in this particular lesson as it's more of an advanced technique. If you did need to put holes on multiple faces of the part, you could get around that by just using the hole wizard feature on each of the faces. Also be aware that you can place holes on planes and non-planar faces. That means you could place a hole on a cylindrical face. In this exercise, we just need the hole on the top face. So we will click on that in the graphics window and you can see it's now asking us to place the hole. What you're looking at now is basically the sketch environment. So you do have all the sketching tools such as lines and circles, but the main entity, the main sketch entity you wanna work with is the point. The point is just a single point in space and SOLIDWORKS automatically knows to use those points for the center location of each hole. So if you wanted to create multiple holes, you could just use that tool and place multiple holes around the face. In this particular exercise, we only need to use one. And due to using sketch entities and being in the sketch environment, you can also fully constrain and add dimensions and relations to lock in and fully define that sketch. This also means that we can take advantage of the automatic relations in the sketch environment. For example, in this exercise, I wanna place this hole so that it is concentric with the circular body of this part. So if I hover my mouse over the edge, this will wake up the center point of that shape 
and then I can click on the set point, therefore creating a concentric relation between the hole and the body of the part. Just remember, you can place as many holes as you want on the face for this whole wizard. So with our hole placed in the correct location, you'll also notice that the sketch is fully defined in the status bar down here, uh, and we can move on. So by clicking the green check mark, we'll accept the uh, whole wizard feature and we can push control 7 to go back to an isometric view. So as I said earlier, the whole wizard works by automatically creating the sketch profiles and then basically cutting out the shape of that profile to create the whole. So if you go over to the feature manager tree and expand it, you'll see that there are actually two sketches created for this feature. The first, if I click on it, you can see is the profile shape of the hole. And all that is doing is automatically creating that sketch profile based on the uh, values we put into it. And then it's Revolve cutting it through. The second sketch profile is actually the location point of the hole. It's not recommended to edit these sketch profiles directly. So if you did need to make any changes to the whole feature, as with all other features, just click on the whole wizard feature and in the menu, go to edit feature. You could then on the fly change this to a completely different hole type if you wanted to. And that is the beauty of the hole wizard feature is that you can create one specific type of hole and use that, or you could go in and edit it and completely change it to something else. We don't need to make any changes in this case. So just exit out and we are back to the main model. Let's do one more example before we finish. This time we will create two holes simultaneously by using the one feature. Again, launch the whole wizard feature, select the whole type as whole, standard will be ANSI metric, and the type will be set to drill sizes. Change the size to seven millimeters, and you may have to scroll down a bit to get there. So 7.0, and make sure the end condition is set to through all. Move over to the positions tab and click on this side face here. Again, normally you would place your holes first and then use the dimension and relation tools to fully define those locations. But again, we can take advantage of the automatic relationship and hover our mouse over the shape of this body so that we can see the center point and then click on the center point. This way we are creating that automatic concentric relationship to that area. If I just rotate this model a bit, you'll see that because of the through all condition, it is actually going to punch a hole through both sides of the part all the way through. So if we click OK, you can now see that a hole is created and it's punched right through the part. As mentioned earlier, the other aspect of the hole wizard feature is that when you start doing your working drawing, any holes you create with the hole wizard will automatically be annotated for you, thus saving you some time in that secondary process of creating the shop drawings for the part. This won't be covered in this lesson as it's a separate lesson to go through, but in this lesson, we just sort of practice using the hole wizard to get an idea of how it works in a modeling environment. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video and let's move on to the next lesson.